Good afternoon, Blue Beamers. My name is Troy DeGro, and I'm excited to partner with the team at Brickstech and Brighter Graphics to deliver world-class Bluebeam training and customization services, empowering you to get the most out of your Bluebeam investment. So let's get started. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build a large plan like this one from several, several sheets and do a takeoff. So we're gonna show you the different pieces to come out with this outcome. First off, I'm gonna show you where we're starting from. And over here, you're gonna see this drawing set has several different sheets to it. And they're all blow ups of that overall plan we were just looking at here. You can see the keynote or the index map of each sheet up here. And we can flip through those with greater detail than the overall plan. So where we want to head is again, this combined sheet where I brought in each one of those individual pieces uh, to, so that we're able to do takeoffs when measurements cross over different sheets. So the troubles that we have when they're individual sheets is that this silt fence that we're tracing along here goes from one sheet to the next and we don't want to double up our quantities by crossing over that match line. So we're going to look at how to combine these sheets and first off we need to combine or first off we need to create a large blank sheet to paste these onto. So I'm going to go up to file new PDF. It's going to open up this screen and I'm just going to make this uh, 100 by 100 just to make sure it's oversized. Portrait landscape doesn't matter. If you wanted to, you could come in here and uh, select a grid pattern. I'm not gonna do that, I want mine to be blank. And I'm gonna say, okay. And there's our blank sheet. So now the next step is to go back to our multiple sheet um, drawing. And we're gonna go back to sheet one over here. Sorry, sheet one. We're on the far left side, and I'm gonna show you how to bring these into that larger sheet. So first off, we're going to go to our edit menu, go down to shortcut, and then we're going to pick and draw a shape around this plant. So I'm just gonna pick, pick, I'm gonna cut over here somewhere and just get close to that match line. There's some overlap when we look at this from plan to plan, but we'll um, show that. If I hold my shift key, I can draw a straight line. And I'm just going to come over to here and double click to close that shape. That's going to flash blue and take a picture of that area, putting it on my clipboard. And then I'm going to go over to my new document, right click and paste. And it's going to bring that in at the exact same scale I took it from. So you can see that there. Then we just go on to the next sheet. Jump over here. Again, go to our edit snapshot. Draw a new window. Sometimes you'll notice it's snapping to that match line. Sometimes when I'm doing these snapshots, I like to turn off my snap to content. So it doesn't snap to those grid lines. This one's pretty rectangular, so I'm just gonna click and drag a rectangle, let go, it'll take a picture again. And then I'll show you how to really quickly paste this, right click, paste. And then if we zoom in, we can start to look at the similarities in these drawings. And we can move this one manually to line up with the other one. And a lot of these contours and things uh, on the document will help us get close to where those line up. And then I'm just going to let go, leave it there. And even though those overlap, that you can see that they are, uh, you can see the continuation there. So if we do our silt fence again, we can draw a line all the way across these multiple sheets and get the total length of material. 
So a lot of times when I do these, as soon as I place them, I like to select them and go over to my properties and click on lock. This will lock those in on the placement of the sheet so I can't accidentally move them. So that's how we build those. I'm going to come back over to my combined sheet that I showed previously. Now that we're back on our combined sheet, I'm going to come down here and add this last piece in here. Go back to my multiple sheet document. Should be the last one. Go to edit snapshot. Again, turn off my snaps. And I'm going to click and drag to grab that area. Actually, before that I do that, I want to add the scale to the image before I take that screenshot. So I'm going to come over to uh, my edit, go down to PDF content and cut content. I'm going to grab this area here. It's going to cut it and put it on my clipboard. I'm just going to paste it here. I can flatten it. I just right clicked and flattened. And then I'm going to go do that snapshot again. So edit snapshot. Click and drag my rectangle. Make sure I get that scale in there. And then I'm going to jump back to my combined sheets, right click and paste. And then we'll get this last piece of the puzzle lined up as best we can. Sometimes I use the arrows on my keyboard to nudge them. Once I get them close, There, I just gave it a nudge with my arrow, and you can see that lines up pretty good. I come and check up here. Looks pretty good up here as well. And now I've got all of those pieces of the puzzle put together. Now that we have the puzzle put together, there's a couple things that I want to show you. Um, first off, I showed you how to lock those mark or those different images that we pasted in. I showed you how to lock them. Uh, sometimes before I do any markups, I'll actually flatten those. So now that I've got this last one in, I'm going to right click and flatten it. And when I flatten it, it's no longer an item in my markups list. So I'd like to kind of clear that out. If I look at this one again, in my markups list, you'll see that there's two snapshots. So just to keep a clean markups list, I like to flatten those, um, but I will lock them temporarily while I'm putting together the puzzle. Now that I have the puzzle put together, we'll look at a couple of settings here. If I zoom in on this area, uh, you can see down here, I have my line weights disabled. If I turn those on, you can see some of these lines get a lot thicker um making it more difficult to see certain things uh, so i like to disable my line weights and another one is the dimmer so this one here if you're having trouble seeing your markups stick out from the rest of the pdf you can click on this dimmer and it will dim the pdf and this little pull down menu will allow you to select how far you want to dim if I go 30%, now my markups really stick out, but I'm still able to see the PDF in the background. That's what we have for you today. I wanted to thank Vince for taking the time to help present this month and showcase the brilliant work he's doing in the Bluebeam community. If you have any questions regarding training or customization services for your company or yourself, don't hesitate to reach out to the team at Brighter Graphics.